Hey there, Buy Round listeners. We have got these brand new hats, limited availability. As you can see, the great artwork there of my good self on the front and a bit of a Buy Round logo on the side. Uh, Charlie, tell our listeners where you can get these hats from. Yeah, that's right, Jimmy. The buyround.com is where you go. And it's really the only website you should be going to if you're podcast merch. I don't care if you like other podcasts. Yeah. You're sitting here right now and you're watching this advert. You need some merch. You need some merch. And it- what, what's the best thing about our merch? What sets uh, us apart? Quality. No. Limited edition. No. Ah, uh, I know what you're saying. It's because you get tickets to a live show. That's right. That's you're right. You're first in the mixer for yeah. the live show, and there's going to be more of them this year. We so are plenty of few live shows, yep. Best way to give yourself an opportunity is get some merch. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Buy Round Interview Show. Now, today I'm joined by um, a fascinating friend, former teammate at Canterbury, uh, a premiership winner all the way back in 2011 with the Manly Sea Eagles and also a recent premiership winner in 2022 with my old club, St. Helens. Welcome to the Buy Round interview show, Will Hopawati. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. Matt, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on and there's so many questions. Uh, I've got pages and pages of notes here. Um, but how are you, mate? Recently retired at 31. You hang up the boots. Um how you how you feeling with it? How are you processing not having a uh, preseason? Uh, yeah, well, I was telling my family it's probably been the most um, enjoyable break, Christmas break I've had, just not having to worry about the head noise of testing and preseason. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to actually dig in and rip into food and uh, enjoy it. And so yeah, it's been good. I mean, yeah, you mentioned I retired uh, at the end of last year after our uh, test series against England. Um, you know, had you asked me, you know. Five six years ago, I, th- I thought I'd play to you know 33, 34, um, but yeah, just the, the body wasn't holding up as I'd like. But um, yeah, still grateful that I had the run that I did, mm. uh, and it was always going to come to an end one day, and um, a bit sooner than I thought. But still grateful for the career I had. Yeah, is is there any specific injuries that were just? No well, I just good? I just kept doing my hammies and my knee uh, was sort of playing up over the past couple of years, um, and you know tried everything under the sun to to get it right, but. Um, yeah, I suppose just couldn't handle the, the load and intensity of professional rugby league. I was ticking all the boxes at training and things like that, but you know you can't really mimic uh, game scenarios. And you know, come game day, it just yeah, it kept going on me. So it, sort of knew. It, it's really frustrating, that isn't it? Like <laughs> yeah. a lot of athletes. Again, you kind of fortunate that you get to that stage mm-hmm. and you have a long career, but the f- levels of frustration when your body can't do what it used to do, yeah. or you're having breakdowns over the most, the, the simplest thing yeah. or you know, where you, you, you remember where you used to be yeah. in the pack of running and yeah, then yeah. You're creeping towards the middle <laughs> yeah. and you're like, what, what is going on? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really frustrating, but um, you did have an amazing career and I know gratitude is a, is a big part of your life and I'm excited to find out about what's next for you, but I want to take you back to the young boy. Um, I'm one of seven, pandemonium household um <laughs> always someone to fight with uh always someone to entertain um but you're one of, of 11 you're the eldest as well i'm yeah. the middle what, what was it like growing up <laughs> in such a busy household yeah it was uh it was it was chaotic you could say it was fun uh it was loving there were fights <laughs> <laughs> everything everything really and so um yeah, always sharing rooms, sharing drawers. Hurry up and have a quick shower as the hot water runs out. Um, it was it was fun. Yeah, as uh, I suppose, you know, had I not had that childhood and upbringing um, with my siblings and my parents, that you know, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. I learned a lot of my standards and values from my parents, and um, a lot about family and love through you know being in a busy household. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was good. Wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Like, we fight like cats and dogs, but we, <laughs> we all know, like, we, we love love each other. But as the eldest, um, did, did you take on a, almost like a, a parent role uh, uh, as well? Like, a lot of helping out? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. Because I, yeah, I was the eldest and, um, you know, mum and dad, as I, you know, sort of grew up throughout, you know, later childhood and into my teens, there was obviously babies and kids around and so... Um, yeah, mum and dad were asking me to help out and babysit some of the kids sometimes and, um, 
you know, I still, it's, it's a bit weird for me when I see, you know, my younger brothers and sisters, you know, graduating high school or uh, even, you know, Albert's playing down the Canberra, um, you know, seeing them be adults because in my mind I still see them as my, you know, younger siblings, but obviously, you know, they grow up and create their own life and uh, it's a, it's weird and a joy for me, for me to see at the same time. Yeah, I guess as well, the, the extra thing involved in that and we'll get into personality type mm. and, and how that same environment environment produces different people yeah. we've also got a famous dad like a professional athlete yeah. uh, as a dad as well um who sometimes made headlines for wrong reasons yeah. how was that for you as, as as a young boy seeing your dad um on tv most weeks yeah i suppose i had a, a unique um upbringing us i was you know, shown by my dad everything what not to do. <laughs> and he would always say, you know, you know, he'd tell us boys, no, boys, I'm the crash test dummy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely laughs> he'd say that. Say that. And so, uh, yeah, that's how we learned. We obviously, kids have fathers that they look up to and have an example. We had that just, you know, in the opposite way. All right, this is what not to do. So <laughs> we, 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 we say it in like a joking way. <laughs> we'd or, say it like half joking, half serious, really. Yeah. And so, um, and... I think, yeah, the thing is, obviously, he was always in the headlines for, you know, things that probably weren't the best. But, um, you know, come home, he was he was dad. That's th th that's what I was going to say. Like, it, it's different, right? It, you know, you speak to some people in not too dissimilar situations, yeah. but it's just dad. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and yes, when we would go to, to watch his games, because he was, you know, so hated by the opposing fans, um, and they'd hammer him, you know, they'd abuse him, <laughs> call him names under the sun and... You know, it was, it was a unique, I don't know, situation for us as kids. Because like, man, all right, they, they hate that so much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's that bad, is he? Yeah. He's, you know, he's vacuuming, cooking for us at home. But yeah, they're just hammering just because of you know how we played. He'd like to be, you know, a bit grubby and get in there. And so it was all just yeah, part and parcel of professional rugby league, I suppose. Yeah, um, it, it it must have it must have influenced you though, like in in terms you know consciously or subconsciously but in terms of him like playing football was that was that something that was a big part of your life uh, as well you saw dad playing and you think well i want to go and play was that in, I'm, I'm assuming it was massively encouraged um from a from being a youngster uh yeah yeah it was you know he'd, he'd take me into the um you know to training uh school holidays take me into the sheds after the games and, you know, I was getting to rub shoulders with, you know, players that I look up to, Terry Hill and Steve Menzies and uh, Jeff Tuvey, Cliff Lyons, you know, he was playing with those types of players at Manly and, um, you know, I got to go in the sheds as a kid and I'd see these guys be like, man, these these guys are legends, you know, and just, I don't know, just sort of ignited a, a fire within me, like, man, I hope to, you know, play as, as they do and play in the big leagues one day. And it did come true, didn't it? Yeah, it yeah, true. I suppose so. I was just driving, actually, when we came back from England uh, and we are driving home to our place in, in DY and um, we drove past Brookie and I was just telling my wife, I was like, man, it's pretty crazy. You know, me and my dad, we both debuted at that field uh, at Brookie Oval. And, um, yeah, so obviously we're both done now. It's pretty special to look back and think that, you know, we both debuted for the same club at the same field. Yeah. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. It, it, it is cool. It, it is. And I know there was – you know other influences in, in your life but was football pretty serious from a young age for you i'm just trying to understand you know you growing up and i know the church was a big influence but yeah. but did football take a a big portion of your life as well yeah um well as, as a kid i i was actually pretty useless as a kid <laughs> coming through and uh dad never really forced it upon us he just would bring us to his trainings and games and things like that and uh subconsciously it, it uh yeah it did have an effect on what i wanted to be growing up and then it probably wasn't until i got to you know beginning of high school where um you know this wish to to play professional rugby league really became a, a goal that i wanted to achieve i made my first little junior rep team in under 11s and that i suppose for me was the turning point or the you know the fire that was ignited me like oh man i'm gonna give this a, a red hot crack and see how we go yeah well you you did all right hopper um and We'll we'll talk a bit more about Korea um, in a couple of moments, but then take you back to that one of eleven. Um, 
again, I can appreciate being one of seven. There's some similarities uh, between my brothers and sisters and I. Um, and there's a lot of differences as well. We've gone different paths mm -hmm. and, and we've got different personality traits uh, and we've got different t personality and uh, opinions on different things as Christmas dinner can be quite argumentative <laughs> at the time, so some things not to bring up. But for, for you, be, being uh, 11 of you and seeing the, the difference, like, so yourself, who is a, a d devout Christian, um, I'm, I'll be right in saying no alcohol, no caffeine, no sex before marriage, um, v live a very clean lifestyle. Yeah, and yet yeah. some of your other uh, siblings maybe make some some different choices how is how does that happen like how does 11 people in the same environment produce these different outcomes it, it uh, just it fascinates me it really does yeah well you're right yeah i'd say yeah i don't drink alcohol uh or more so more so it's, it's coffee um as well rather than caffeine and um also oh, it's just sorry it's no ca it's no coffee coffee yeah, yeah 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 and so um yeah and church church was a big part of our life as a family and still is still is today um you know we would go to church every sunday as a family and hold you know family gatherings once a week called family home evenings that we would have and uh, I, I i do that with my my wife and kids now uh it's something that's you know instilled in me and it's, it's been a blessing for our family but um yeah as you said we're all blessed with uh the gift of agency where we can choose, you know, what we want to do. And my siblings aren't all the same as me, which I think is a good thing. I think our, our family would be very boring if they were like me. <laughs> um, but we get, you know, everyone looks at life a bit differently. Um, and now that we're all sort of growing up and becoming adults, uh, everyone's sort of taking their own path. But um, at the core of it all, I think, you know, you look um, within us, ch church and our heritage is a big part of our family. Um, and we hold, you know, we all believe uh, in our faith as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, some of us practice it more than others. Uh, that doesn't make us, you know, less lovable or less trustworthy. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just the, the way it is, really. Hmm. Were you ever tempted um, to go down a different path? You know, being a, a any teenager will be, surrounded by temptation was there a level of difficulty or yeah. how did you put your faith above those distractions temptations as a youngster and obviously seeing it around as well yeah um thankfully i was involved in a lot of things with church obviously church every sunday then from year nine to year 12 would have early morning uh seminary which is a scripture study class from six to seven every morning before school and so um, and I'd strive to, you know, read my scriptures and pray on my own. And I think it was those little, you know, training sessions spiritually that gave me the strength to, um, you know, not succumb to temptations. I'm not here to say I'm, I'm perfect or I didn't make a mistake because that's far from the truth. But, um, yeah, I was obviously tempted to do things that weren't uh, aligned with my beliefs and values. Um, but because I, you know, using a sporting analogy, put in the, the training hours, doing the spiritual work, um, it gave me the strength to not to succumb to certain temptations. And, you know, to an extent, I'm very grateful and I feel like it's been a blessing for my career um, that I did, you know, hold strong to my standards because, you know, a lot of the incidents and issues that, you know, athletes in any sport um, are involved in that, you know, may take them on a downward path a lot of it is alcohol related um, and you know I got you know, nothing against anyone that, that drinks alcohol or anything of that nature but because I abstained from it you know that helped me with many avoiding many off-field negative consequences. Well I want to steal a quote from a guy called um, Caleb Presley here okay. um, I'm not sure if you you know who he is but um, he was doing a, a recent interview mm. um, with somebody and he spoke about Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus turned water into wine Surely he wanted you to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> like if Jesus is going to do that, mate, surely, like, that's his message, right? Yeah, well, I think He's not got, it, it, that's a miracle, right? If I've got this water and I turn it into wine, like, 
come on. It's not going to take all that. Effort. I've not done all, all that effort. For, or Jesus hasn't done all that effort for you not to have a sip. Yeah, well, I think the the the, <laughs> the closest beer I'd get is ginger beer. <laughs> there, there you go. There you Technicalities. Go. Um, was there ever, a, in all seriousness, was there ever a moment where you were in a situation and you you had to you 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 were close to doing some of these uh, maybe dr say drinking alcohol or, or drinking a coffee or, or you had to really drill down to that very core belief system and go no um i think what helped me was i decided early uh in my life that this is the path that i wanted to live in terms of living the standards of a latter-day saint mm -hmm. um and so you know when it comes to times where um temptations will come or you know, even even serving a mission um because i'd made that decision early in my life uh you know 11 12 years old i it was easier to say no not that it was easy but that it was a lot easier to say no in a, um in those situations uh, it, so it's just who you were so it's uh, will say oh yeah he doesn't drink that's yeah. it yeah yeah and i feel like because i you know stamped the flag early then People sort of knew and understood and sort of left me alone, really. Yeah, that, yeah. I think I'm, I'm guessing that that would be part of it. It's like, no, then people just don't ask. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, boys would, you know, muck around and things like that. But, um, yeah, it wasn't really a thing people would, you know, try and poke or pester me with just because I, yeah, sort mm. of just said my, how I was and how I am uh, in a, you know, non judgmental, this is just how I am. Yeah. Uh, so as a, as a teenager, you face different temptations. You start coming through at Manly um, in and around the 05 um, season. Sorry, not 05, um, 2010 season. Mm, um, and I, from what I've been led to believe, it was quite a, there was, <laughs> you know, a few lads that yeah. enjoyed a beer from time to time. Yeah. Um, the new set of temptations, when you're in that, um, in a professional sport and environment, you mm. can be very easily influenced. Mm. Was there ever a temptation when you were at that point, especially with some of those players, would have played with your dad yeah. uh, as well? So, which is, again, it makes the situation even stranger. Mm. I'm assuming would have had a drink with your dad and then, all right, the, the son's here. Like, <laughs> hey, come on, well, let's, yeah, let's go and yeah. have a beer. But, yeah. with, did that then bring a whole new level of I've got to put another stake in the ground? Um, not really, to be honest. The boys are really good for me. I sort of, I mean, obviously I, I stated you know, I, I, what I didn't do and how I was and uh, they were very respectful of it. Um, and I, you know, I still look up to those guys today, uh, all the senior boys when I came through at Manly. I, I watched them as a kid, I watched them play with my dad and then, you know, I finished school in 09 and I was playing with them in 010 and um, it's, yeah, it was a really surreal moment for me and so you know i think i was just more excited than even worried about temptations that i got to rub shoulders with these players yeah well any young player coming through is what would be especially back then that a lot of nerves going into training mm. um the head coach des played with your dad <laughs> yeah. did that make it easier harder was there was there ever a sense of like, uh, I'm here because of my name or, or do, uh, do, do you ever remember like having feelings like that? Yeah, well, I suppose that's sort of what um, what drove me a bit was was uh, making my own name really. Yeah. Because I was, you know, coming through the grades, it was like, oh, that's Hopper's son. Uh, that's Hopper's son. And I was like, man, I don't want to just make it because I'm Hopper's son. Like I want to, you know, be my own Hopper, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, that was, uh, I suppose, in a good way, a driving factor for me that I wanted to create a name and create my own career um, for myself, sort of come out of my dad's shadow type of thing. And um, I, you know, I remember meeting Des as a kid, going to trainings. And yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah, I've ever, I've, been, I've got you know old photo albums at home that I'm sure my parents have got. Where I mean, I'm taking photos with Des as a kid. Uh, he's at training, and uh, you know, lo and behold, now he's my head coach. I'm petrified of him. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, very different. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll get a picture with your laptop. Yeah, like. yeah. And so obviously, you know, then it's just like, oh, there's there you go. And take a photo and now. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, hammering why, me if I'm making the wrong Why didn't you reads. jam? Why, <laughs> yeah. why aren't you connected? Why aren't you SDS? <laughs> exactly. Like, I can just imagine it's, it. Oh, exactly. It's like, it, this isn't the same guy yeah, who, uh, exactly, yeah. who we used to meet. Yeah, when I got down to business, I was like, oh, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would have been so strange. Yeah. Like, so strange. Yeah, it was. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I just remember sometimes I go to training just really nervous just because one, there's just how he is, he's intense, you know, demands perfection. And then obviously the the caliber of players there, the Stuart brothers, Jamie Lyon, uh, Steve Maddai, Watmo, these guys were, you know, players that I looked up to. And I just didn't want to stuff up at training or make a mistake. So I was a bit nervous, like, oh, man, just need to get through this field yeah. session. <laughs> Don't make a mistake, head down, work hard. Well, y you sure did. And it, it, it ends in the 2011 grand final victory, um, which I'd like to get get your thoughts on, but um, it's probably more after the fact that you're thinking, pop the champagne, um, footy trips, you know, endless parties, d days of drinking. <laughs> you go on a two year mission after this, but bef before we get there, can you describe that that feeling of, of winning the premiership with Manly back in 2011. Um, yeah. At 19. Yeah, can, yeah. C can you appreciate it? Or well, now I do uh, a lot more than, you know, at the, mo at, you know, being in the moment, uh, you know, at the time, obviously just over the moon, grateful, happy, excited, just a very surreal moment. Um, you know, that I won a premiership with the Manly Seagulls. Um, you know, my dad won a premiership with the Manly Seagulls. This is my, my childhood team that I followed, supported growing up, and uh, some of these players I looked up to, and now you know I want to comp with them. It's uh, yeah, it's such a surreal moment. Even when I think of it now, it's just sort of a pinch yourself moment. And uh, I suppose I even appreciate it more now because you know after that I never made it to the big dance uh, again, really, in, in my career. And so thankfully I got to achieve that um, with that team at that time. Uh, and yeah, something I'll forever be grateful for and never forget yeah it, was that was that a bit of a moment for you or did you feel like i've become my own hopper now um i suppose so yeah i was i you know i was playing regular first grade um you know won the comp that year with manly and um i suppose i you know i still had a long way to go i really hadn't done anything in the game but i be playing a couple you know debuting 10 was playing most of 11 and um within me i felt like man i Still got a long way to go, but, you know, I'm grateful for what I've done so far. Mm. Well, like I say, you didn't do the traditional celebration. You go away uh, on a on a two-year mission. Why? Um, yeah, because, I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I'm not coming on here to, to preach or anything like that, but yeah, I, no, I... I just... I, um, it, yeah, because I, I, Hopper, it's so... Like I admire it because at 19, nothing was bigger than trying to play sport and mm. become a professional rugby league player. And you walked away from millions of dollars at 19 for something that you feel is, I guess, greater than what sport can give. Yeah, and I... You know, short answer is because I, I love um, I love you know Christ and striving to be a disciple or follower of of His. And though I'm far from perfect from that, I think because it's you know instilled in in my values and my beliefs, I felt like you know this is what He wanted me to do at that time in my a point in my life. Um, and again, that wasn't a, a a decision I made you know after that grand final. It was a decision I made when I was you know, twelve years old. That meant. When I turned 19, I'm going on a mission. That's what you said. So you, so this started when you were 12? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I sort of, you know, being raised uh, as a, as a Latter-day Saint, um, you know, I had older relatives and friends go on missions um, that, you know, they shared with me their experiences and the great time they had. Um, you know, and, and within me, I was like, man, I want to experience, you know, those things for myself. And so I feel like, yeah, around the age when I started high school, I sort of, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve a mission. And so... Always, I just knew in my mind, 
um, you know, with whatever contract or situation was thrown at me, I just, in my, I just knew well, when I'm 19, I'm, I'm going to serve a mission. But, and but I feel like. What, why 19 though? Well, they, they, there's a reason for being 19. Well, in, in our church, they encourage uh, young men from, you know, 19 to 25 to, to serve missions because it's physically demanding. Like you're, you're out all day knocking doors and things like that. Yeah. And so obviously you need to be uh, somewhat fit and capable. Yeah. And that's, you know, sort of the age bracket that they recommend. And so I, yeah, I just wanted to go sooner rather than later. And in my mind, I was, when, when, when I hit that milestone 19, I'm, I'm going. And there was no turning of the head. Like you're playing for New South Wales. Yeah. No, like there's no. You're playing yeah, yeah. week in, week out for for Manly. You've cemented your spot as a first grade regular. But mm -hmm. like you're in the team every week, no questions asked. Like, yeah, I just uh, yeah, I just felt like I, I really wanted. This is what I um, wanted to do, and I knew that you know, two years away from rugby league is a is a long time, and I knew I wasn't guaranteed any you know starting spot or anything like that when I get back, and so, but again, I was willing to take that risk because it was something I wanted to do. Did you have any conversations around that the, the closer it came to being um, reality? Like, did you speak to people like your dad, speak to people at the church? Yeah, I spoke like, with, yeah, you know, some of my mentors yeah. um, at church, spoke with my parents and, you know, none of them were ever forcing like, no, you're going on a mission. That's, you know, that's what you said. Um, they were just like, look, it's your decision. This is... You know, you choose this path. These are the consequences. You choose that path. These are the consequences. And I said, yeah, no, this is, this is me. This is what I want to do. And um, I'm just grateful I got to go out on a high, really, uh, to finish a premiership. You know, and carry that momentum into a another path. Yeah. It was a blessing. So, so when you're there, like, pardon the ignorance. Like, what's a typical day looking like for those? Two years. Where were you? You were in Australia. Did you yes, yeah, so I was based in uh, in Queensland. Uh, so I was around Brisbane, south of Brisbane, a little bit up like north, Townsville, Cairns. Oh, um, so you'd move around. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I'd move around. I wasn't sort of stuck in the one spot. Um, sort of move around around Queensland. And a typical day for a missionary would wake up at six thirty uh, in the morning, do some exercise, uh, get ready for the day. Then uh, we'd study, have personal study from eight to nine o'clock. And then, because you're always in twos, you always have a companion. And then from nine to 10 o'clock, we'd study as a companionship, you know, go over lesson plans and our day, what it looks like. And um, and then we'd be out from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. out door knocking, teaching, offering service, um, just really trying to be a blessing to the community that we were in. Wow, that, that, that would be very intense. And this is every day for two years. Every day for two years, yeah, and it was it was it was hard. Like was, even we weekends as well. Weekends as well, yeah. They're probably our our busiest days because people were home. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. What? On that mission, did you ever think, "What have I done? I'd rather be back playing." <laughs> <laughs> Not once, to be honest. Like I was just I was all in. Um, wasn't the perfect missionary, far from it, but I. It was hard. Like it was, I've never slept so easy in my life than uh, as a as a missionary. Like ten thirty lights out, I was out like a mm. light, just because I was so you know physically drained from a, a full day. Um, but at the same time, there were so many uh, enriching experiences that I got to experience, life lessons that I was able to learn that I apply now as a husband and father. Um, yeah, things that I learned on the mission field still continue to bless me in my life today. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there about doing exercise. So in, in the morning, you leave um, for your mission end of 2011 with a view of coming coming back. I believe you'd, you'd signed a, a contract with Parramatta before you left. Yeah, yep. So did you have like a, a training schedule with them or, or, or you had like a, a, a plan because, you know, if a player, say, gets – suspended for um a doping violation yeah you know two years four years out the game whatever they they would have like a if they had a desire to stay in the game a pretty strict 
mm. training program to maintain, um, you know, the, exactly what it takes to, mm. to get out on the field each and every week. Was that on your mind at all or it was just I'll do? Yeah, and so um, Parramatta, they sent me uh, like a, a training program um, that I could do and – uh, it was hard to stick by because, you know, we only had a, an hour or so in the morning to do some exercise. And, you know, the exercise we did was, you know, nothing compared to, you know, training, reg specific rugby league training. It was mostly, you know, jog around the block or whatever we could fit in. Um, yeah. And so I could, you know, I'll try to do some, you know, some of the re prehab exercises that the club would give. And uh, if there were weights around where we were staying, you know, you know, do some gym work. But, um, yeah, they still, you know, and the – periodically they'd come up they send the, the trainer up oh yeah um and yeah just to check on how i was going um chiriaco mesha would come up and um yeah see how i was traveling run some fitness tests um and weight tests that they do just to see how i was tracking along yeah what what was the sort of feeling like when when he dropped off like, <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> I panic stations <laughs> yeah panic stations because I knew you know you don't train and you go into preseason and you're done it's mm. sort of similar feeling where like man I didn't really you know put in the, what they expected me to do and you know come in I was doing these testing but um, Mesh was good he understood my schedule as a missionary yeah and uh, he just said look just do the best you can we'll get some data and we'll feed it back to the club so we know what we can come back with next time and so it wasn't um, he wasn't really strict and like he was just more so understanding and still, you know, encouraged me to do what I could. Yeah. So in terms of signing for Parramatta before you left, mm. how, how was that? Like two years is a long time in professional mm. sport. And I believe like there was a coach change there. Did you sign mm. under Ricky Stewart? And then he subsequently moved on to Canada? I um, actually signed under Steve Kearney. Steve Kearney, yes. Yeah, yeah. So again, that, that was another blessing. Um that I seen, you know, signing a contract. Yeah, before you before go. I left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did that make it, it was, easier? I suppose so. Yeah, I think that was a bit of um, what's the word uh, assurance, knowing yeah. that you know when I finish my mission, I've got you know this is what I'm falling back into. This is the pathway. What's yeah, next? Yeah. This is what's next. And so um, that I suppose yeah that, that made it easier in terms of transitioning um, from you know missionary life to back into being a rugby league player. And so I saw, yeah, signed under Steve Kearney. And then, you know, after him was Ricky Stewart. Then after him was Brad Arthur. So did you play under Ricky Stewart at all? At origin? No, but in, in Pat, so no. in that time, yeah, Steve Kearney signs you, new coach comes in, he then moves on. And then yeah. there's another coach. Yeah, so I missed two coaches. You missed two with, coaches. With, with when I signed um, and I came back to, yeah, to BA. Yeah. Well, in, in terms of, that n negotiation, uh, do you think you signed it like what you were worth or did they pull back because because you were in demand as well? Like was there, yeah. was there a temptation to stay at Manly or, or, or did Para offer more dollars? What, 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 why why sign for, for Para? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, pa Para did, yeah, they, they put forth a good good offer for me. Um, and, yeah, I took it. And, again, it provided security for me for when I got back. I knew, like, oh, man, I finished this two mm -hmm. years. I got something to, to come back to. Um, and yeah, I was excited for a new change, but I think the biggest thing was, yeah, good offer and assurance, mm. um, for, for me. And so, yeah, I was grateful for that. And cause, cause as a missionary, we don't, we don't watch TV for the whole two years too. So I would just hear reports of, um, how the club was going in those two years. I think they, they got the wooden spoon, uh, one or both of those years. And so. You know, people in Queensland, obviously, they're rugby league mad up there too. They'd be like, oh, your team, your team, what's going on? I'm just like, oh, I don't want to bother it, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't rude about it. I'll just, yeah. you know, I'll speak about it and things like that. But I really wouldn't, you know, inhale what they were saying. It's just like, oh, it is what it is. But I'm here for, on a different job at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, you you wouldn't have seen any footage. No. But, and how did news filter to you, through to you that, like, they've put, Steve Kearney's gone? Like, yeah. did, did you, I'm assuming there's no phones? Yeah, well, we, we just got, we had a little Nokia. That's just to organize our appointments and things like that. And so um, there's, there's not a smartphone. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just hear from friends or people from church about what's going on. They'd, they'd tell me like, oh. Yeah, you didn't ask. I people didn't ask, just yeah. Tell you. Just tell you, like, oh, Carney got sacked. Oh, Sticky got, and you know, he's moved on. I was like, oh, okay. 
It is what it is. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, that is what it is. Um, well, we, we mentioned about that those first sessions back in, in, in the preseason, two years away from the game. Talk to us about when, when you you go back for your first session after two years yeah. on your mission. But I'd probably first, what did it feel like to finish it? Um, incredible, really. Uh, very spiritually rewarding, I would say. Um, yeah. I still remember the feeling of finishing. It was just, yeah, really achieving something in your life that I, I always wanted to do. And having achieved that was, uh, yeah, it meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me. And so I was very grateful that I, you know, had that two years to, to do that. Do you feel like you accomplished what you set out to accomplish? Uh, I feel so, yeah. Like, obviously, you don't want to have regrets. But, you know, looking back, you you know, wish things you may have done differently. But ov overall, I was um, I was content and satisfied with, um, you know, how I put in the work as a missionary. Yeah, so you're feeling pleased with that. Um, like I say, any return to preseason training is is difficult. <laughs> um, what's it like when you you rock up after two years out of the game and not even having that base level yeah. of, of fitness or conditioning? It was tough. Yeah, it was. Um, and yeah, I think I'd, maybe BA was just being kind. He never really, you know, put me on show anything. Um, I I felt like I was struggling, but they never made me feel like I was struggling. <laughs> Um, obviously, preseason to preseason, they're always hard, right? But I just remember feeling like, man, in my first contact session, I remember doing the next day I woke up and you know, I feel like I played a game. <laughs> like I was, I was that sore. I was like, fire out. What's going on here? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it was a it was a hard preseason, but yeah, it had to be done. Mm. It had to be done. Did you ever think, I might go for another year? And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think in one of the conditioning drills, that, that thought floated yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, mate, the, a bit, a bit of complication in and around what was going on with, with with Parramatta, and then you end up signing for your old gaffer um, and come to the Dogs for Des. Mm. Um, how was that negotiation coming over? Was the was was it was, was I right in thinking that Parramatta were paying part of the wage, or was there a payout from Parramatta? Um, yeah, so that that all unfolded and got that um, that pay from from Parramatta and moved on to Canterbury, and as you said, the old gaff, he um, it just gave me vibes of of when I was back at Manly. Really, uh, I just remember yeah speaking to him on the phone the first time and just yeah, just, just his voice. Hey, hey, where are you going? <laughs> I was just like, oh, here he is. This guy's gonna yeah, he's gonna push me to where I need to be, and so. Um, I think yeah, him him at Canterbury, um, and obviously the the roster we had with you know you were there was very appealing to me, uh, and yeah, I, I felt it was the the right decision for me to mm -hmm. to move there. Yeah, well, we we were delighted to have you. We we thought you were the you know the, the answer to some of the issues we'd had at, at fullback, um, and you know we you you welcomed into the club, I guess. One thing that surprised a lot of us um, was they're not playing on a Sundays. Um, can, can you talk to us about that, that how that conversation came about and why um, you felt it was important to you? Yeah, and I think, well, sorry, I, yeah, I must say that that was, you know, another reason why um, I wanted to come to the Dogs was because of that condition that they allowed me to have. And, uh, you know, in a, in a perfect world, I, I would have loved to have that clause, you know, throughout the course of my career. But at the same time, I understand that, you know, as an employee, I have a duty to my employer. And um, But, yeah, as we were in negotiations, uh, I just thought I'd throw it out there to, to So the you, just th you just threw it. Had it, had, it, had it ever come up before? Had, it, had you ever thrown it out before, like, um, say, when you were coming back? from your mission or yeah. before you left and you signed your deal with para mm. did you did you ever ask previously i felt like i um didn't have the legs to stand on just because i was a junior you sort of you know when you're coming through you just do whatever you're asked to do to get to get a crack but now that i was sort of playing regular first grade footy i thought oh i'm gonna just throw it out there and ask um ask the question and 
yeah, that sort of, you know, went back and forth uh, with, with the club and with Thes and myself. Uh, and thankfully they, yeah, they said, at the end they said, yeah, all right, we'll give it to you. And uh, Did it come as a surprise? Oh, I, it did, to be honest. Yeah, I was hoping but not really expecting it to go through. And um, Do you think you would have accepted a no? I mean, I wouldn't have, you know, thrown my career out the window had they said no. Um, it's, you know, my belief is where possible, you know, don't work on a Sunday uh, where, where that is possible. And so, yeah, I just put it forth to them and said, is this, poss- is this a possibility? And uh, thankfully they came back and, and said, yeah. I guess, did you think it would be as big a story as it, as it was? Uh, no, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't. Um, no, I didn't, yeah, it's a short yeah. answer. Yeah. Did, did you, you know when it was being signed, did you, did you think about like the impact it would have on, on the club? Um, and maybe with teammates, I'm thinking, you know, you weren't the only mm. um, person of faith mm. in, in the team at the time. Mm. And I can remember um, you missed, uh, we played a Thursday, so we'd have s- Friday off, Saturday off, mm. and then Sunday um, we were back in. And then you went there and it being, <clears throat> like we, we didn't know at this time. Mm. And someone said, where's Hopper? Oh, he's at church. I can remember Sam, Sammy Parrott being like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then a few others were like, oh, well, if I was at church, I, I, yeah. I want to do something else. Did, did, you, yeah. did, did that cross your mind at all? I suppose looking back now, I probably, um, yeah, could have gone about informing the boys um, better as opposed, obviously you guys would have found out through media, through Des, um, other than you know myself, and so looking back now, I, I I think about yeah, perhaps I should have been up front as I was with Des in the club, mm. um, being up front with uh, my teammates because I was going to war with you guys every week, and then you know to have that sprung on you guys like that wasn't really fair to you guys uh, thinking about it, and so yeah, that's obviously something I, I wish I could have done differently was telling you guys uh, pretty much when I got in the doors really yeah just so he's knew from the get go this is how it is because yeah. it. it like uh, I admit, like it came as a bit of a shock. Like mm. I, I think, I think we only found out before the first Sunday game. Mm. It was the Tuesday, so they were, they had to name the teams, and mm. then there was a press release that morning, mm. I believe. Um, but you know, you'd made yeah. this decision not to play on Sunday. I suppose, yeah. When I signed, I didn't really think about the yeah the biggest the bigger picture type thing. I just thought, oh man, this is great. I'm gonna say this is yeah. I can't believe this is actually happening. More so, just excited and um, yeah. Looking back now, I definitely would have done things differently. Where, or I got to let the boys know mm. from the get go. Do you think perhaps like the, the club and not not just Des, like Des, um, chairman and CEO, should have said, "Look, we, we can't let you do this." Do you think they should have said yeah. that? Yeah. Do you think they should have just said, "Look, I, I appreciate it, and we'll maybe." You know, for for training days, but for game days, we're gonna need mm. you. Um, yeah, well, that was sort of half what I was ex- expecting. Yeah, um, like meet in the middle kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, meet in the middle type thing. And so, because uh, I understand, yeah, this is a this is our job, right? Mm. We're getting paid to to do this. Um, and again, yeah, I was again hoping that this you know got across the line, but wasn't expecting. Mm. And so, w- when I did get the nod, it was more. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise to me too. But I think, you know, thinking on if I'm, you know, as a fan of the Bulldogs or if I'm on the board, it makes more sense to meet in the middle, right? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose just at the time I was just more just caught up in can this really get yeah. over the line? Because I was of the opinion, I was like, well, yeah, wanted to play on a Sunday, but the, the lad's shown that his faith is more important to him because, you know, you've, you've taken two years out, out of the game so it's not just like you've plucked this out of nowhere mm-hmm. like I was like you've shown and proved like, and sacrificed um, things in sport for this but then I'd flip and be like well fucking hell, we need him on a Sunday like yeah. did, did the prospect of a grand final ever come up so because that was the question as well mm. that 
um, would automatically get put to us mm. on when it came out media day. Will's do, do you support the decision? Obviously, we're going to like. I, I think there were some people within the team that were probably a bit pissed off, mm. but very public support mm. for you and your decision and your faith. But the question is, well, what if he plays? Mm. Uh, well, what will he play in a grand final? Mm -hmm. I guess we were saying we don't know. We we hope so. I jokingly mm. said, well. I think back in 2014, um, Des kept us in the changing room. So South went out first, <laughs> or South went out yeah, so yeah. It's into the tunnel, and we waited. It was yeah, the tactic of yeah, Des. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, if you think that was bad, <laughs> Des will keep us in the changing room till one minute past 12. <laughs> so technically, it goes into Monday morning, and everyone laughed. I was like, you think I'm joking? <laughs> um, the, if it came down to the grand final, if if we'd have gone on, um, one of those one of those years, mm. do you think you would have played? I feel like if the club gave me the choice, I wouldn't have. But if they forced me to or said no, you got to play, then I would have played. Uh, that's sort of the my view on things. Um, I feel like, yeah, in a perfect world, if I had my choice and had it my way um, in what I'd prefer, then I'd, I'd rather be at church yeah. and do what I normally do on a Sunday. But I understand that, you know, the club's paying my bills, helping me provide for my family, and which, you know, eventually ended up that way anyway. Yeah. They said, oh, look, it's can't you no longer keep this clause in. And I said, oh, well, I respect that. I understand it. And let's move on. Was it an actual clause? Was it actually in writing, or was it just an agree? Like a, uh, I guess, it was more, I think it was more so an agreement. An agree, like an a personal ag agreement. Yeah, it's a personal agreement that all right, we'll give it to you. This is how it's going to be. Yeah, there was no clause. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So. Life takes a different direction, and we make the grand final. It's pretty much if Des can convince you to play, or say we're on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's really interesting that because again, I think just obviously coming in and thinking about this interview, thinking back to those times and uh, and what it was like. Like I was skipper at the time, and mm. I did support you because yeah. of that fact that you took two years out of the game. So mm. it was like this isn't a joke yeah, yeah this isn't just like and like i mean sitting here and, and, and uh speaking with you I, th I feel like as a putting myself in your shoes and if i was a team i was like man that's not really a team player like you're putting uh we, we went through all of this together mm. like we should be doing all of this together and you're it's a bit selfish from you and i can i can see that and i mm. totally understand that but I, I feel like with with rugby league it's it was what I did, wasn't who I was. Yeah. Um, as a rugby league player, it's what I, if I was a current rugby league player, I'd say, this is what I do. It's not who I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's Again, that, and, and that's, I'm respectful of that, that that's who you are. I guess for, 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 for me, I, it was who I, it was the biggest part of my identity. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was times where it was like, it's difficult to, for, for this not to be the center of mm -hmm. the universe. Yeah. Like, and I totally get yeah. that. Like yeah. it was my God. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was my church. It yeah. was my savior. It was my Jesus. Like that that was it for me. And for, for, for a few others in the team yeah, yeah. as well. Well, I could, yeah. yeah. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In case you didn't know, like, yeah. It, <laughs> So there was times, like, I, I can remember one particular incident. We we played down in Canberra. It was a Sunday game. Mm. You weren't playing. Uh, Josh Morris missed Origin. This is the, it's a Sunday before State of Origin. Someone goes down in training mm. on Saturday afternoon mm. I at, that. in New South Wales. Mm. <clears throat> and um Josh, I think, gets pulled 
from our squad mm. to go into New South Wales camp Sunday morning. Mm. Games at like, I think we were the f- two o'clock or the four o'clock on mm-hmm. the Sunday, which it doesn't really matter. But, you know, the gaffer's like, <laughs> like, so we'd only travel down with 18. Yeah. Josh Morris goes away. The person who's 18th man is not an outside back. I can't recall who it was. Mm. And he is having like kittens about who's <laughs> going to play in the center. Yeah. I, th- I can't even remember who he brings down. He brings Bra- Remus. The, yes, Remus Smith made his Remus debut. Yes. debut. But he, he played did. New South Wales Cup, I think, the day before. That yes, Friday. he had done, yeah. And obviously, like, you know, with Des, the devil's in the detail. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you've got to know yeah, everything that's yeah. ever happened on that side of the field. He since. called me up that morning. He called me. I was getting ready for church. Called me up, be a bit of a panic. Because obviously, I didn't know anything yeah. that was going on. It's like, um, you know, <laughs> what are the chances of, you know, backflipping on the decision and driving down to Canberra and playing? <laughs> it's like that. And I was just like, what's going on? I'm putting my tie on. I was like, yeah. oh, what, what, what's going on? What's going on? And then we obviously started talking. It's like, I think he sort of, you know, yeah. comes through. He's like, oh, no, no, sorry. All good, all good. Don't worry about it. All good. Yeah. And he hung up. And then and then I think he must have called Remus after. Oh, man, that was <laughs> – like, obviously, I'm trying to prepare for a game, but the gaffer was just <laughs> – and then Reem, Paul Remus turns up and he's just like showing video, games. video, video. Watch this, 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 this. Like info, info, yeah, info. Yeah, yeah. I think from memory, I think we won. He actually did all right. I could be wrong, but um, yeah, what a way to make make your debut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> you, you you did say, mate. Obviously, um, you reversed that decision. Did how did that sit with you? Um. I could understand where the club was coming from. So there was no ill or bitter feelings towards um, the club. And I understand that I have a a duty to to them as my employer. And um, again, it's, you know, where possible, mm. don't work on a Sunday. If you can, you can. If you have to, then you got to. And I got, you know... Friends and family that are faithful Latter Day Saints that got to work on Sunday just because that's what their role involves. And so, because that you know uh, agreement was taken away, there was no yeah, no ill feeling because I understood I still have a duty to to the club. D- did you talk about meeting them in the middle at all? Like saying, how about training? Um, <clears throat> I didn't know. I just took it as this is what they wanted. They wanted me. Um, you know, all in, whatever yeah. was required. And I understood that. And there was, yeah, there was, again, no ill feelings, mm. bitter feelings. I understood. Did, was there, was there a sense of like relief that it's over? Was it a sense of like, you know, when you were playing on a Sunday, how did that make you feel? Um, um, yeah, I was, yeah, I wasn't, um, there was no like, guilty conscience or yeah. you know, wishing I was, you know, somewhere else. Um, I understood the drill. And so, you know, when I rocked up to the game, I was I was all in, yeah. Mm. I was in game mode. We're just going to take a quick break to talk about friends of the show, AG1. Now, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last two years, I've been drinking AG1 every single day. No exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized, focused, and it really takes away that mid-afternoon slump that I used to suffer from. It was awful, but now thanks to AG1, it doesn't happen. It delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's powerful, healthy habits that's also powerfully simple. Healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated. The thought of taking multiple supplements, pills, protein powders, etc., sounds exhausting. But just one daily scoop of AG1 covers my nutrient gaps and supports my mental and physical health without any hassle in just 60 seconds every morning i know i'm giving my body what it needs and setting up sustainable habits in the long run we are so grateful to have ag1 as a partner of the show and if there's one product that i had to recommend to elevate your health it's ag1 that's why we've partnered with them for so long so if you want to take ownership of your health start with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin d3 and k2 
and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. After your career at Canterbury, you head over to St. Helens. Um, where you win a premiership 2022. 22, yeah. Can I get your um, thoughts and your experiences from, from being over there, I guess? Um, it, it always makes me smile when I, when former teammates of mine um, go over and experience life in England because obviously you're playing the same sport, but life's very different. How um, How's your reflection on your time over there? I loved England. Uh, to be honest, and so did my my wife and kids. We loved our time over there. Um, I think we knew because obviously we're always going to come back here to Australia to live, um, and so we knew, man. Let's. When am I ever going to get this opportunity to move on the other side of the world and be played to play the sport that I love? Like, when's that ever going to happen? And um, so moving over there, we um, we just really enjoyed the the people, the culture. Um, even the weather. Obviously, people talk about the weather. It's cold, and I don't mind the cold. It's the wet. I think the wet, but cold. I don't mind the cold. Rugging up, big puffer jacket, beanies, and things like that. And did you just, ever play in snow? I didn't. No. Did you tra- did train? You? Yeah, yeah, train. Yeah, that was. Yeah, preseason gave me a real shock <laughs> in the middle of winter. Oh, did they give me a shock? But um, no, nah, loved it. And I think you know what added to that experience was was being at St Helens and the people there. The boys there um, just made the the whole experience for myself and my family an enjoyable one. Yeah, how was it um, playing at Old Trafford, winning the grand final? Yeah, again, that's another because uh, second year in you win one. I was first year, yeah. yeah uh, and first year. No, but I'm saying uh, from Manly, your second oh, season, yeah, and then your second to last season, yeah, you yeah, win one. So bookended your your career with premierships. It yeah, was, um, again, another surreal experience and. Yeah, even just walking out on Old Trafford, um, you know, this, this is a stadium you see as, you know, living over here in Australia, you only see on TV, mm. in the books and magazines. And so to now be on the pitch in, in a grand final um, was, uh, yeah, such a surreal moment. I still remember, you know, just waiting in the sheds as they do in Super League. You walk out together yeah, and just, you know, you got to wait for the opposing team to come out. So you're both there and you walk out together, right? And... Um, yeah, still remember just waiting in the, the tunnel. It's a bit dark and tracksuit on. Tracksuit on. We got the white tracksuit on. I can see the little jeeps fl- lighting up on the boys, the back of the boys. I'm just like, how good is this? Like, you can see St Helens Rugby Football Club on the back. I'm going to war with the boys. It was, um, yeah, such a wonderful experience. Mm. Uh, what did you make of the the standard of Super League? Do you think? Um it gets undervalued over here. I think so, it does, yeah. I think, I mean, growing up here in Australia and and coming through the system here, playing NRL, I didn't watch much footy at all, like just mm. in general. And so, you know, as a natural consequence of that, I didn't really watch much Super League. Um, but, you know, having gone over there and experienced it, I I loved it over there, yeah. And mm. I think the, the, the standard over there, um, is is undervalued um, from from people over here. There's, I mean, I got to play with players in St Helens that could, you know, walk into a starting lineup uh, over here in the NRL, and I, you know, I really believe that. Um, and you know, I see these caliber of players, and obviously they're they're over there. Whether they come over here or not is is another question. But um, yeah, they could walk into an NRL team. Well, I think. It's easy to see one of the big influences as to why you went to St. Helens um, was Christian Wolf. Um, obviously, y- you coach at Tonga. I- I'm assuming that's correct, right? That yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was a big influence. Yeah, I had a obviously have a good relationship with Wolfie through our times together playing for Tonga. Um, and I, I, you know, I always wanted to play in the Super League. Um, to, you know, later in, in my career. Um, and I didn't want to go over there. I know there's sometimes a stigma where, you know, old sort of retired players go there and, you know, just la- lounge around. Um, yeah, I did want to go towards the back end, but I didn't want to go as a slouch. And mm. so it was probably the hardest I trained in the off in the break 
just because I didn't want to disappoint, you know, going into a championship environment yeah. and rocking up to preseason, I didn't want to be a slouch. And so, um, yeah, thankfully he was their head coach at the time. I got to go to a championship winning team and club and um, – I don't know. I don't know if you even know if you remember, but you gave me a buzz before I before I left, mm. uh, and yeah, you just called me up and said, I "Do you remember?" Yeah, yeah. You said, "Congrats on the deal. Uh, you're gonna love it there. You're gonna love the club. You're gonna enjoy it." And everything you said came to pass, really, mm. because I did. What was it like going into that? Not just championship environment, but they'd already they'd won three in a row. They've got they're going to make history. Mm and attempting to win four in a row. Mm. As the newbie in the team, mm. what what sort of emotions, like what sort of feelings yeah. do you have? Because you're you're probably more driven mm. because you've not experienced yeah. that championship there. That yeah. you know, I think even thinking about like Alex Wormsley, mm. right? He did he miss the final like you were there? Yeah, uh, he missed the couple yeah, and like, he did. like yeah, I always yeah. think like What's Big Al thinking? Like, is he going, ah, we well, yeah. got a couple. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's not. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's. Yeah, well, because they obviously, you know, I seen when they beat Catalans the year before and part of me was thinking like, oh, man, I, I really hope the boys sort of don't um, be like, oh, we've, three's enough. Like, yeah, let's just take a year off. Relax a little bit, not be as driven. That was, that was what I was thinking. I was like, I really hope the boys – aren't like that i really don't because i could understand if they yeah, did yeah. like everyone's been chasing them consistently for three years they've overcome you know it, and won the comp three years in a row and i was thinking please don't you know relax and anyways i get in there we have you know team meetings and things like that and that's that's the last thing on their minds they're just like people have done three in a row no one's done four type you know type mentality and so i was just like oh how good is this yeah um the boys are driven and you know I'm all on board for it. And there's you know there's a bit of pressure as the newbies like, you know we've come into the team and if we lose it's you know it might be the mindset like oh it's because those guys are gone and these new guys they're still gelling and so there's sort of that um, floating in the back of our thoughts like oh you know we don't want to be a bad injection into the into the club. Uh, well that, that was some of my thoughts anyway. Yeah. Coming into into Saints and so yeah getting there the boys are driven they're they're wanting to go for it again and. Um, that just only helped help me. Yeah, well, it is an, an amazing rugby league club what they've managed to achieve over there, and um, a prime example of youth being the like invest in their youth. Mm, mm. There's so many um, players that have come through the system there that that have been a mainstay of yeah. that that four in a row team. You guys do four in a row, and then you you come over here and. Beat the the other back to back champions, mm. the, the Penrith Panthers. Like that's, I think that group of, of players cemented themselves as the greatest St Helens team of all time. What what were your thoughts when you when you got here um, around attempting to to beat Penrith? I feel like within the team there was a quiet confidence that we could that we could win. There there really was. There wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't cockiness. It was just like, and I felt being the underdog and no one giving us a chance was probably the best thing for us. Um, especially because you know, over in the Super League, everyone was chasing us, like yeah. we're the we're the head of the pack, and you know we're defending our title now. It was just like, oh, let's let's go, let's go for them. Like they're yeah, like a new, they're yeah, the target. New, yeah, new. We mindset. were always targeted as yeah. you know, the boys, and but now we were you know we weren't the target. We were going for the target, and so I feel like that sort of, you know, gave a bit of fresh air in, into, the, into the lungs, into the team. And there was that bit of, you know, us against the world type of mentality. Um, and we we knew that Penrith were a great team. Like the boys knew that they watched the footy over here and uh, we knew that it wasn't going to be an easy game. We knew you know, playing at Penrith wasn't going to be easy. But we just had that, man, let's just, if we lose, everyone expected us to lose. Let's just go out and give it a red hot crack we believe we can do this so why not why not now yeah mate it was and it, as you i mean you were there and you come into the sheds after and things like that and it was just such a oh man i was so I, I was a fan it was the first time in a long time i've been a proper fan oh 
it was just yeah. like, I, I got asked to work that game I was like not a chance I'm going like <laughs> yeah. proper fanboy oh. well I say proper fanboy I was in the chairman's suite but <laughs> yeah I didn't want to have to queue up and pay for beers <laughs> yeah. and stand in the rain like not that fanboy yeah. but I'll, you know yeah yeah well but, you know the feeling like it was just such a yeah, what what a feeling! I it really been, felt I like I haven't been like that since I was like fifteen watching. Oh, watching and I think just the, just the way it, the way we won it. Like obviously, you know, they score at the end. Oh man! Just before, and obviously that's a bit heartbreaking. They got a bit of momentum heading into overtime, and you know we thought he hits the field goal. And it's just, man, we we did it. We came over here and accomplished what we did. You yeah. know, I remember Robes. Robes said at the beginning of the we we're training. We we're training over at Nairobi. And he was just, you know, we had a bit of a hard on and just like, you know, boys, we've, we've been, feels like we've been sitting here on a mission. Come collect these two games and we go home, stay focused on the mission. And everyone was just like, God. You got me fired up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robes, you still got, him, still got him fired up, Robes. Man, I can imagine him saying that. Yeah, he's just like, we're just, you know, sitting here on a mission. Come get these two games, we get out. Yeah. That's wow. How good. Yeah. James Roby, oh, what a player, king, what a what a what a player, what a man. I um, so much admiration for him. Um, but I mentioned there about the influence of Christian Wolf bringing you over to St Helens, and obviously you, you achieved so much, so much success there. But in 2017, the Tongan team have a monumental change and. Um, in, in terms of everything, international rugby league, um, you were one of those star players that are part of this Tongan team, along with Jason Tamalolo for FITA. Do you realise the impact that, that you guys were having um, during that time? At the time, no. Looking back, you can see it a bit more. And at the time, I didn't think, you know, we'd have... Um, you know, that, that much effect on our people, on the game of rugby league. Um, you know, we didn't realise, we didn't realise what was coming really. Obviously, you know, Jason came, Andrew came, all the New Zealand boys came um, and committed to Tonga. And just as a team, like we just thought, man, how good is this? We didn't realise the ripple effect that it will have on generations to come, on fans. And yeah, just that whole experience of, you know, going to Tonga, being paraded there and, you know, the fans and the crowds uh, over here in Australia and in New Zealand was just, uh, yeah, what an experience it was for, for us. And we, you know, we were obviously right with we the centre of attention and in the thick of it amongst our people and, you yeah, what an experience it was. Yeah, well, mate, I, I, I say this and I, and I mean this, that, that that semi-final game was the best atmosphere I've ever played at. Now, I and I put in that Wembley Stadium, um Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, Old Trafford, Anfield, mm. uh, Stadium Australia mm. here. That, what, 18, 20,000 mm. was the best atmosphere <laughs> I've ever, ever experienced. And, and what an insane game. What are your memories <laughs> from that day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll agree that that was, yeah, that crowd was, yeah, electric. It was just almost the ground was, you know, rumbling so to speak, that's our vocal and the vibe and the energy there. And, um, yeah, I re, I'll, I'll share a story. This is your podcast. But I remember, obviously, Drew loses it at the end and the ref calls it knock-on, game's over and, and uh, our tournament's over. Um, you know, I'm going up to the ref saying, you know, please check it, please check it, it doesn't check it, so we lose, we're out. And I, you know, sort of walk towards the back and, I've, you know, I'm crying. I'm just, my heart's broken um and the first person that was come over to console me was you uh and then yeah i'm not sure if you remember or not but like obviously you could have been you know yahooing and parading and cheering with your teammates which you had the right to do you just want a semi-final match going to the world cup grand final um you know but i'm you know i'm heart's broken crying in the back and you run over and uh you're hugging me uh and so yeah, I want to say thank you for that. I remember. Well, we were still dogs teammates at the time. I was leaving the following year. That's right. Yeah, I yeah. think I, know, I think there's something important in in victory moments because I know what it's like to be on the other end of that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think there's 
you need everyone in that in that to make that game happen. And I realized like this is a special game and like you were a teammate and I had my England teammates as well that I wanted to celebrate yeah. with, but I think it's important to to recognize. I really do. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, um, I think, you know, if you don't know James Graham as a person, I think that one experience uh, will show you everything that you need to know that, you know, they just won, we just lost in a semi-final World Cup. It only happens once every four years. And you had the right to be, you know, celebrating with your team. Um, but the first person to console me was was yourself. So, Gaff, thanks for that. I still remember that. still remember that till, till this day. That, uh, and something I, um, I appreciate. No, well, thank you, mate. I do appreciate that. But before that, there was a moment because I realised what had happened was quite controversial and what was going on. And I hit a bit of a panic because in that stadium that day, mm. say 20,000 mm. in there, there was probably a hundred people that were like supporting England. A mm. um, couple of traveled. Yep. M my family were there. So I think my, my, my wife and my two kids were there. Yeah. Uh, Mum and dad are there. I can remember thinking, I need to get these guys <laughs> somewhere safe because this is in any other sporting environment like uh, football yeah. or soccer influenced me. Yeah. Like growing up, if if you've Mayhem. got like opposition mm. fans in the vicinity of an angry crowd, yeah, you are like in danger. In danger. And I'm yeah. thinking, like, my dad's gonna get killed here like my kids are going to be <laughs> yeah. in danger anyone that's got any sort of england like mm. oh god sort of going over but everyone's just clapping and singing the hymns i'm like okay like now yeah. I can, like i was genuinely worried mm. but i think what it speaks to me about is like it's something that rugby's got rugby league's got that mm. we can go to war together we can have controversial moments mm. but we come and celebrate at the end of the day i think it speaks volumes to to what rugby league's about and i think for me it's hard to go past that that game as being mm. you know it's definitely in like my, my my top five in terms of like games i've ever played and it mm. was insane it was yeah. like it was insane like yeah. what a, when, what a time. when i think have, did Havili score second yeah that's like what is going on <laughs> i think he went and then uh He's kicked off, then we scored again. Yeah, the back to yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two he scores under the post. Yeah. Then we're game on, like, I think we're down. By, I think you're down by four, yeah. maybe two. Yeah, no, two, two, down two, by two, two, down by two. And yeah. then we were, like, I remember Jason Tamalolo, like, he's already hard enough to tackle as it is, <laughs> but he just had, like, an extra gear he yeah, found. Yeah. It's like, he's running it, and I'm like, ah, it's me. <laughs> and then, do you remember... You before Fafita dropped it, mm. there was a shift, right? Yeah. And Jerry McGilvery has intercepted it. Right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So imagine us we're scrambling, yeah, scrambling, yeah. just tackle time alone. Yeah. Fafita, yeah. boom, you're marching down the field, you shift it to your left. Yeah. And McGilvery intercepts. Yeah. So I was going, Oh, <laughs> McGilvery gets about to the halfway yeah. and he dr he yeah, knocks on in the that. cover tackle. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> 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 like yeah. back on deck. Yeah. Then you use run yeah, in again. Yeah. Tam Lolo's found seventh gear <laughs> by this point. Mate, it was insane. Yeah, what a game. It was out. absolutely in yeah. insane. Like you could barely script it. Oh. It was a magnificent game of, of rugby league between two teams just going after each other from the opening whistle, the atmosphere, the crowd. Um, it it speaks volumes of what the game of rugby league is really about and it's and it's fans that attend the game as well. Obviously, there'll be examples that you could point to with crowd trouble, but I think generally speaking for me, um, you know, for me to feel mm. safe in, in that environment and my family to feel safe is, is massive. But what I want to try and get you to talk about, Hopper, is like where can... Tonga go now as a as a nation you had that semi-final in 2017 mm -hmm. where you beat New Zealand on the way you've beaten Australia on the way mm -hmm. you beat Great Britain uh in 2019 19 yeah um World Cup previous one 
lost to Samoa, so you mm. probably lost a little, little bit of mm. momentum there in terms of where you were going. But that's fine. Success isn't linear. It doesn't always go mm. up. And then mm. you had the recent series against against England. Where where can the nation of Tonga and rugby league get to? Where where are you? Because I think you're still part of the, you're speaking about robes. You're here on a mission to win two games. Well, Tonga went on a mission to win two games. This is long term success. Where mm. where can where can they go? Yeah, well, I, I believe the the sky's the limit. Really, obviously, the the pinnacle in international rugby league is to win a World Cup, um, and that's I believe that you know that's the ultimate goal. Obviously, it's still a few years away, um, and there's you know no reason why uh, we can't. Obviously, it's not going to fall in our lap, and there's so many other good teams out there: Australia, New Zealand, England, Samoa, and Fiji, Papua New Guinea. I think you see all these teams getting better and better, and um, yeah, I believe, you know, put the right pieces uh, to the puzzle in. Uh, there's some, you know, great youth coming through, uh, young Tongans coming through that are playing, you know, more and more first grade. And I think the more uh, experience they get, particularly for, you know, our halves, I think that's where um, where would be our biggest, you know, impact for for our country. The more they, they're playing, you know, professional first grade football, the, the better it is going to be for their international careers and so um yeah still a lot of a lot of hard work to you know be put into place but you know the goal as every other country is is to be number one and uh win trophies uh i believe that that can happen but yeah there's still a lot of things that yeah could happen just, before that you speak about um half that young katara is a amazing Great talent mm. um what is he still a teenager is he 20 yet is it yeah well, <laughs> last year in the World Cup, well, the year before, sorry, 22, he was, he was still doing like his HSC exams and, and stuff <laughs> while he was in camp. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, he's still, yeah, I think he's only, I think he might be turning 20 this year or 19. He's still very young. Yeah. Is there, is there things, the, the NRL or a pathway system or, um, you know, I can't quite recall what the eligibility is now around state of origin because that's the big, the big danger with the international rugby league is yep. you maybe you perhaps you need to make a choice between playing for your state and playing for say Tonga, mm -hmm. Samoa, mm -hmm. Engl e England even mm -hmm. or, or New Zealand. Do you feel that it's um, the the NRL need to make sure that you can play represent you? I can be a Tongan international and an Origin player. Yeah, I believe so. I believe the rules that they have at the moment that allow players um, to play both is is right, and it's only making the international game stronger. Like, if you get picked instead of Origin, you're you know a very select few that are getting picked, and mm. um, you know I was lucky enough to do both, and I'm just as you know proud to do both. Um, yes, I'm I'm Tongan. I'm proud to be Tongan. My my parents were born and raised in Tonga. But I was born and raised here, yeah, here in Australia, in New South Wales, and I grew up, you know, watching Freddie and Joey and these guys. And man, I wanted to play for New South Wales uh, as well. And so, um, I can un I can understand why you know people would say it needs to be a strict line, um, but I feel how it is at the moment. There's you know players that are just as passionate as both jerseys. I mean, you look at the teams today, Junior Paulo. Proud Samoan, yeah, great player for New South Wales. Yeah, and exactly. as a fan, you know, I want him in the New South Wales team. Mm. Uh, and if he's ruled out, you know, because of uh, international footy, then then we're not getting the best players really in the Origin Arena. Yeah. Um, just quickly on the the, the situation in Tonga, it, it is can more be done for their pathways? Like you say, there's a lot of second generation, third generation um, Tongan players that have been born and raised here mm. but probably fewer that actually grow up mm. in Tonga now I saw the scenes from you guys going there there's obviously this huge attraction mm. and this this influence that you can mm. have so uh, if you're a, a young Tongan boy or girl mm. and you want to play rugby league how's the pathway system actually over in the country at this moment in time yeah I'm, I'm not too sure to be honest and I, I feel I mean, I don't know what's what's in place. I'm sure the NRL has a, a pathway system where, you know, they can guide some of these mm. players to, um, 
know, come through and come over here because there has been some great success stories of people that you know grew up in the islands uh, and you know made their way way over into into the NRL. And so, um, you know, in answer to your question, in terms of improvement, it's hard for me to to comment because I don't know exactly what's in yeah. place right now. Um, but you know, if there is something that does provide a way for them to play and develop their skills and talents over there, then transition over here. Then, if that's not happening, then I think that'll be a good yeah. idea to have. Because I think it's important to maximize um, the potential for success mm. of, of a, a, a nation like Tonga, like mm. Samoa, mm. where you're okay. We've got this real interest. I I think you're just scratching the surface about where you where you can go. Yeah, like you huge level of interest in 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 the nation. Saw the scenes of how many people. It was like yeah. everyone on in in Tonga came to <laughs> see, see you guys. <laughs> That's um, what I felt like, so yeah. I think we're we're silly if we don't take advantage of that as a, as a sport. Yeah, um, it was phenomenal. I can only imagine what it was like um, to be there, but. I just want to ask now, Will, before we get to the end and the last couple of questions we ask each and every guest, what lies ahead? Um, what's Will Hopawati is not rocking up for preseason <laughs> testing, the skin folds are not a concern, <laughs> um, the beep test, the yo-yo test, the oh, one rep max. Thankfully not, yeah. What, what's, on, what's on your mind now and, and, and what are you hoping to achieve Um and I guess you you know you, you you speak very passionately about how rugby league isn't part of your identity, but what is going to take shape in the next few years, and or what are you, what are your plans? Mm. And so I um, I'm running my own business uh, with uh, my business partner. It's called uh, Will to Succeed, um, and we are self development facilitators, and we've been going around to different uh, schools, youth groups, organisation, businesses. Uh, and sharing principles that I learned throughout my career that they can that can be applied, you know, in any career path. And we we share, you know, how these organisations can create a culture of success. And as individuals, you know, for an example, for those youth kids in school um, that are trying to figure out, you know, what's next after school, trying to help them figure out what their strengths are and what occupations align with their strengths and give them the tools that they need to, you know, create the life that they want. And so um, that's uh, that's the new dream and goal. Um, How long has this been set up for? Is this something that's completely new or...? Well, I was doing I was doing a little bit when I was playing here at Canterbury, just when I could on days off. Um, we'd go to different you know, schools and, and groups, youth groups. Um, but now that, you know... I'm finished now. I've got a bit more time to, to throw into it. And um, yeah, we've since, since coming back, we've gone out to a few different groups already and provided some workshops and trainings and programs for these these kids and peoples and organizations. And um, yeah, it's something I'd love to do on a, yeah, regularly on a constant basis. Yeah, have um, it like com com completely can, I guess, be the big part of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah how, and that. so if anyone's out there listening or watching, um, how can they gain access to this? Is that uh, well? If you follow our page on Instagram, it's just called Will to Succeed. Um, you, our details and our contact information is on there. Um, yeah. that you can get in touch with us. Well, I think. Look, I didn't live by the same principles, but I've seen the person that you are. So I think if anybody's looking for guidance in that, um. Or, or needs that pathway or, or some of those principles, I couldn't recommend you highly enough. So, um, yeah, make sure you, you check that out. I, is there anything else that's um, taking up your, your time at the moment? I'm also actually doing some work with the, the roosters in the pathways uh, oh, right. in, in the wellbeing space. Um, and so... How, how did that come about? Because I don't... There's no affiliation. No, nah, no, I just... Uh, yeah, I just, you know, put the... When I knew I was finishing up, I just put the... I just contacted some of the people that I knew in the NRL. Um, that are in the the well-being space and said, hey, if there's you know something that comes up, um, let me know. I enjoy you know working with the younger generation yeah. and helping them. And uh, yeah, this this opportunity came up, so grateful to the club and uh, allowing me to do this. And so yeah, working with Flegball and Mats and helping the boys with their their off-field, um, wouldn't say issues, but just things that they got going off the field. Whether it's yeah, we're just trying to a lot of them are trying to figure themselves yeah, out. Yeah, right? yeah, and obviously you know. You know, as a footy player, when things off the field are 
uh, flourishing, then you know you're able to train and play better. So um, yeah, striving striving to have an impact in that space. Yeah, and I see keeping you busy. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. I've uh, I've enjoyed the role so far. It's been good. Do you, do you miss it? I miss um, the the banter and the away trips and the card games. We had a few good card games, mm -hmm. didn't we? Yeah. We did. <laughs> a few of those long ice baths as well. Just some of the man, you know, some of the pointless conversations that are just stupid stuff and games of would you rather and yeah, one of those pointless conversations. I don't know if you remember you telling me we're doing an ice bath one day after training and you go to me, Hopper, do you ever like sit in here and just like find a little bubble and just follow it? <laughs> 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 and follow it all the way till it goes down the drain. <laughs> I remember just sitting there and I was just thinking, what, what is going on in your mind? <laughs> it was in there doing an ice bath and you're like, yeah, did you just follow a bubble and just follow it all the way down the drain? <laughs> that was an indication as to what was going on in my mind and some of the pointless thoughts. Like that's a, a small snippet. If some things are just like, <laughs> hmm, where are you going? <laughs> oh, God, man alive. As so if, stop as thinking, as that's, if, that's as that's if you remember, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think I miss things like that. Um, yeah, just conversations, hanging out with the boys, playing cards during lunch. Mm. Um, I yeah. used to enjoy being like, oh, Hopper, come on. Let's see. Come on, just do one. Night. Let's just do one night out together. I want to see. Want to see? Or, or be like, be saying like, I'd always think like, I'd love to see like you or Sam Parrot. Like, I'd be in a random part of Sydney and be like, oh, What are they doing? Like, uh, uh, from back beers, like, they've been lying to us. Like, like so, come on, I know you've got one. it in you. I know you've got one. Oh, <laughs> oh it, it is funny how you you. I, the, there's elements I miss. There's elements I, I really don't like. The, the the pain on your body you don't <laughs> miss, but you just miss the. I think it's the little things. Yeah. Because in, in any other walk of life, you're not knocking around with thirty blokes <laughs> around about the same age. Yeah, yeah. All you know, and just the sledging and the banter. Oh, mate, it's <laughs> just <laughs> relentless. Oh, it's it's just hilarious. Nonstop. Yeah. I, I say this a lot. Like, I can walk through an airport comfortably now like pulling my bag because i know no one's gonna like flick <laughs> yeah. it over you know i like, used to yeah. get that like yeah, all the time. walking with your bag like your wheelie bag and someone would just kick it and it flip your wrist <laughs> yeah. like, like, you, know. you miss you miss yeah. someone doing that yeah, like yeah. in a weird way i just want someone to kick my bag over and <laughs> away you go um well hobbit it's been fascinating chat we've got four questions um we ask each and every guest the first one is the dream spine so a one, six, seven, and nine. Uh, there's no rules around it. So hopefully Charlie sent you this yesterday. It's that's kind yeah. of his job. I don't um, know if he did and how did. much time you've thank you, Charlie. You've you've thought about it. So yeah. Um there's no rules. It's people you maybe admired, played with, against. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyone really? Yeah, anyone. Mm. Uh, fullback, I'll go uh Slater. Six uh I couldn't decide between Freddie or Lockyer. Um, do I got to pick one? Uh, it preference, but yeah. All right, I'll go Freddie. All right. Uh, seven, Joey. Nine, um, either Cameron Smith or Robes. I don't think people really come to appreciate or know how good James Robey is. I know. Was. Yeah, it was. It's yeah, he, he freak. I'm gonna put robes in there yeah, for you. I'm gonna make that call because I can't speak highly enough of him. But it's a pretty handy spine. Slater, Freddie, Joey, and our mate Jr. Mate, what if honestly, it irks me that people don't know how good he is. And you know what? I yeah. credit credit. And I, I again, like I admire him because he stayed, and he and he could have come, but he yeah. didn't. He he stayed and twenty years. Hmm. And his body last year, like, I don't know, say we'd be doing uh, stretching or some prehab, just to, like, for him to stand up and to get down to the floor was took ages because he was that sore. Mm. And to get up off the ground, he was like, uh, and then you go play 80. Yeah. <laughs> he was, well, I, I had the same – he had the same hip operation that I had. I don't okay. know how bad that can be. 
I was knocking out like 25, 30 minutes towards the back end <laughs> for him to be knocking out 80. That's just not right. Um, you, you know, he had, he, he had double, I think he had a groin surgery and he got like a bad infection as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, he nearly just... lost the ability to walk again. <laughs> like, he just battles his way through. He's an absolute freak and a pleasure to have played so many so many games and really is. Um, if Footy didn't exist, what do you think you'd be doing? I don't think I'm going to be too hard to go off. What's that? <clears throat> Sorry, if football didn't exist. Oh, if football didn't exist. What do you think you'd be doing? Um... Are we speaking like coming through and then? Yeah, like where where do you think? Well, what I mean, do you think I, I, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't too good in school as in I wasn't the, the best with grades and things like that. And so my grandfather, sometimes some holidays I'd go and work with him. He was doing removalist. Uh, he was a removalist. That's and a so, tough gig. Tough gig, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'm named after him. I probably, yeah, I see myself if I, you know, after school didn't. Go down the rugby league path would have been something like that. Yeah, okay. I, remember, so. I thought you were going to say something within the church. That's why I said oh, I don't think there's any point in asking this. But oh, okay. Well, yeah. most of the stuff you know with church is voluntary, um, and obviously I, I still do stuff with the church. Yeah. I'm involved with the youth. I look after all the the boys you know that are 12 to 17. Run programs with them, teach yeah. their classes, um, and things like that. In terms of um, the occupation, I think yeah, I would have just yeah. naturally went into something like that. How often are you volunteering at the church? Uh, well, I mean, I, we got a activity on Wednesday that I'm running with the boys. And then just yesterday I, I taught them in a class at church during, like for Sunday school. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's still a, a weekly thing. Yeah. Um, and there's some, some nights we have a gathering where, you know, we share different spiritual thoughts or, and so organizing things like that. Yeah. yeah. So still, still involved with the church. Yeah. So if 40 didn't exist, remove list and doing what you're doing now yeah yeah yeah. um a sliding doors moment that you think about if the alternative would have happened um well i think with or speaking a bit of a pun but um i done work experience in high school um and it was to do with you know making and building doors it was um it was hard for me, like as a as a kid, you know, doing work experience. And I think, I don't know if it's a sliding doors moment, but more so of a uh, a light bulb moment where um, I thought, man, like this is you know what I might be doing after school if I don't either start cracking down on my grades or take footy serious. And so that was sort of a moment where I thought. I'm, yeah, I've really got to give footy a crack because, um, you know, I don't want to be doing uh, this. Not, I mean, there might be people out there doing it. There's mm. nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it just yeah. wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, that type of work. And, um, yeah, I just didn't want to be doing something like that after school. And so for me, that was sort of a moment where, like, I right, need to put my head down even more now and really give this a go. Mm. Um, were, were you an intense trainer as a kid? Intense? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say intense. Like... I'd say I was, what's the word? Maybe, I don't know, disciplined. Yeah. In terms of you know, being on time, the, the, yeah, making the, the, the time, pro, the process. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. process. Mm. But are you, are you speaking like James Graham intense, or <laughs> what kind of intense? There's levels to intensity. That's subjective. <laughs> 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 um, all right. Final question. Um, most interesting person that you've met. Not necessarily in footy, just in any walk of life. Dave. <laughs> Go on. Huh? Go on. Is he still around? Dick Dave. Is he still around? Nah, he's, <laughs> he's dead and buried, Dick Dave. <laughs> Dave. Mm. He was an interesting person. He was. Right? Because obviously I didn't I didn't go out a lot with the boys on the drink. And so I heard about him throughout the season, throughout the years at Canterbury. But it wasn't until my first Mad Monday where, you know, obviously I come because it's a team event. See how things are where I got to meet Dave. <laughs> you idiot. Why would you say that? You must have met way more interesting people than him. <laughs> and so I'm going with Dave. All right. He was, uh, I actually enjoyed meeting him. 
He was, yeah. a, good, he was a funny man. <laughs> oh, goodness, was he funny. Oh, I'm God. All right, Hopper, well, on that bombshell, mate, I think it's time we, we uh, called it a day. So for those that don't know, I, I used to have a person that would come out on a drink <laughs> called Dick Dave Smashington the third, um, <laughs> turn into an alter ego maybe. But, uh, yeah, he's not been cited for a long time, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but, yeah, Hopper, mate, I've um, I really enjoyed sitting and chatting with Thanks you, mate. It's been, um, it's been really insightful. Uh, it really has, and... Um, Again, a, fa- a fascinating career that started with such a bang coming into that Manly team after, you know, I think probably one of the the things I've taken away from this is, you know, you're speaking about driving past Brookvale Oval and going, that's where me and my dad made our debuts. Like, that's mm. pretty cool. That, like, that, mm. it, it, it's rare and it's very special. And um, I guess living in a, a house, a bit a big, busy household, and yeah, realizing your dreams, following in your father's footsteps, and um, yeah, it's been great to chat. And even you know that I, I like different people, and you, you, you're different because the the church is a big part of your life, and mm-hmm. um, I, I I I really genuinely re- respect that, and I find it interesting that people have different levers and and different mm-hmm. dials that they turn up at different times. So. Uh, it's been fascinating to to chat and get to know and and talk to our audience about about that aspect of your life and I think um, the work that you're doing now sounds sounds really interesting as well and it's it shows about the person you are and where your heart's at and it's about fundamentally everything that you've mentioned is about doing things for others and I think there's uh, a lot to be said for that so um, thank you for for coming on and joining us on the Byron mate it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Jimmy, and um, yeah, I'll say thank you for for having an influence on uh, my life as a person, and also as uh, having an influence in my life as a footy player in my career. You really have, I think, you know, obviously coming to Canterbury, you were the skipper at the time, and you led uh, by example uh, through word and deed. And I, th- I feel you had the right balance in terms of you could get along with the boys, but when it was time to train, it was it was time to train, and you let everyone knew. Which is, I think, it's a it's I think sometimes you know. It can be a hard, um, you know, thing to, to balance. But you got that right as a skipper. So, thank you for that and for having me. You know, on on the podcast, I enjoy it. I watch I watch your stuff, uh, and a fan of it. So, thank you. Thanks, mate. All right, cheers. Thanks for listening, everyone.